Hey folks, Foip here, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival World. Last episode, we tried a few things, and well, they didn't go very well. From killing off our mending villager, which was kind of unfortunate, he suffocated to death, and then releasing a soon-to-be horde of zombie villagers onto the lower docks, I don't know if we can call that episode a success. Today, however, I don't know what's come over me as I've got another wacky idea. I want to do something with this waterfall over here. I've always loved this waterfall and I've always wanted to make a giant staple piece around it that will also increase the land that we have from our city to be able to build down here. It's a little worrisome as this idea is something that I don't know if it's gonna work out quite well. I don't know if it's gonna harm the base. I don't know if it's gonna make the base look better. And with that, I should probably stop distracting and keeping away from uh, doing it right here. So go ahead and click that like button for me and let's kick this off into good old fashioned time lapse mode and see what happens. Okay, let's do it. It is the next day now, as I wanted to let this build sink in. As I said, I was a bit worried about it, and I think I like it. I think at this point in time, I know it's a lot different than everything else we have, being the bricks and everything over there, and this is very heavy on the black stone, stone bricks and everything, but I think as we start to build structures on top of it, and we can start to add more of the vibe that we have over here in the lower city, and actually transitioning from a lower city vibe to make them feel like two different places of being this high regal fancy area up top. Next thing that I wanted to fix up was this waterfall itself right here as it's uh, it's a little rough. So right now it's just falling down sand, which that eventually will transform and make it look in something a little bit better. But for now, I want to come down here to the base where we have this whole section and bring it down a bit further. I don't want to have it falling directly flat straight into the ocean. I'd like to have it have a little bit more flow at the base. After breaking out a bunch of the sand, we end up with something more like this in here, which is a good start. I think if we start having the water flow down and we can keep cutting away a little bit of this and eventually we'll turn it into the type of atmosphere that we have over there with that underwater dead coral reef vibe with all of the rocks and everything. It doesn't have to be too perfect in this point. I'm just thinking a bunch of blocks with a few stairs and slabs and things all over the top of them and just extending it up there. So when we have the water falling down, it feels like it has a little bit more of a border to it than we had otherwise. Now that I am looking at it, however, I think we are going to want to include at least some other block in here than just the cobblestone because it's a wee bit rough. I actually don't really enjoy building with cobblestone all that much. I just think it's such a busy block, so I tend to avoid it as much as I realistically can, to be honest. But we can start stretching a little bit of that down here into the center, and maybe we have that look like the streams are splitting, or we can at least create a split in the middle, right in here with a little bit of the cobblestone action, right like this, creating a rock for ourselves. And now for the test of where all of the water's gonna go, we can just come up here and break this cobblestone down, and we'll get rid of those two guys as they weren't really doing too much for us. And that right there is not too bad. I think we could bring in a few more buckets of water ourselves to expand it down here at the base, feel like like it's coming down and that's just very quick and crashing everywhere and then down here it's kind of spreading out a little bit further up here in the city now it's quite unfortunate but we're gonna have to figure out a new way to transport some villagers up here when we need to as the corner of this guy really disrupted the railroad that we had set up so we'll figure that out later but this is what it looks like actually up on the top area i like it a lot i think it's rather cool over here what i was thinking is we can actually take this whole section down we'll be rather careful when we're bringing actual villagers into the area of what they're gonna do to the point this will open up an area for us here to do some building and see what we can come up with in this point this is gonna be an interesting one as i wanted the wheel to be right here 
so we're going to need a few support beams coming out so that we can actually connect into those guys. Then these support beams obviously are going to be holding up a big heavy wheel, so supporting the support beams is going to have to be a thing as well, and I think if we bring it out to right here, that should probably be enough, or is that too far forward? Because that wheel, if we do that, that's a one, two, three, four, five long wheel, and then they have to come out five blocks this way. All right, maybe he's going to be a little bit smaller. Bringing it back about two blocks here, hopefully this will be more usable for us. Uh, otherwise, it was going to be a big one. Next up, to be able to support this thing, I was thinking we could bring in some blackstone, as this point right here is going to be something that spins. We probably don't want to build off of that point too much yet. But if we maybe do something like this guy right into here and we can have something just bringing a blackstone stairs stepping all the way down and i thought it'd be kind of interesting to do the same plan on the top up here as well taking a bit of the stone down so we can actually see what we have so far i'm really making this one up as we go and that's a good start I think that's a totally great start right here. feels like something is supported. Now, I did bring in quite a few grindstones here, and I wanted to try these around the edge. We did this a while ago on a windmill that we built over at the Flower Forest Village, and I thought it turned out super cool. So we do something like that. Then bringing a little button in onto the end feels like we have a bit of a gear that's turning. So if we do that on both sides, and honestly, maybe on this inside face too, if we can fit it in off of these two points, and then we're going to have some buckets inside of the center. Our best way to do this most likely is to be building coming back towards this section here where we have the water actually falling down. And I was thinking that we probably want to bring this face down a little bit further. So no matter what happens, how far we back build back, because I want to be able to build into say like this block space right here. I think what I'm going to do as a temporary fix, just to make it a bit easier to work with, is I'm just going to stop the water up here. But the cool part about being able to work in these little sections now is if we put a a sandstone block right in there we can bring some spruce trap doors in like this and then removing the sandstone and we create a little bit of a bucket which is awesome so if we do that around all of these different points we're bringing in the blackstone like this doing right in here and do these guys and i believe the last one we need is actually on the top the scaffolding around this section is getting to be so bad but that's what happens when you're building in the air i guess and there we go the fourth bucket is now in and now we just got to make this thing feel like a gear or a big wheel instead of right now it just looks like a spoke Back to daytime we go for some more building up here. <laughs> this thing is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. I'll be honest, I was looking at it from down there after I went down to the storage room, got some more chains and got some more of those grindstones as well. And this thing's it's a little tiny. That if we bring in some stairs like these guys right around here, that'll help us create a boxed out section for it. And this is going to cause a lot of issues with the water moving around and everything like that. But I'm okay. This can add some more bulk to the structure itself. And then we can do stair and stair. I wanted to try just putting in some spruce planks to help work with all of the spruce trap doors that we have. Instead of doing anything else, I was thinking more polished blackstone. But we've got a lot of that around here already. So I think literally just something like that section right here could be quite cool. Now, how do I get out? All right, getting these last little ones in over here, and that should be most of the wheel done. I've just got to fly around the edges and throw in the rest of these buttons, and I think we might be able to throw the water back in here after I clean up all of this mess of stone around. It is 1,000% smaller than I thought it would be in the end, but I'm okay with that. That's really not that big of an issue in my eyes here, as I think it's, uh, I think it'll still occupy, I was about to fall off there. I think it'll still occupy the space pretty well for us and get the, get the feel that we were going for that I really wanted out here. As we've got a lot of blackstone around here with this section, we've got the whole ring there, is these guys right there as that end bit, it feels a little frail. It feels a little tight and tiny in here, so I was thinking we could bring Bring in some uh, dark oak right over here and we craft that up into a bunch of dark oak slabs or sorry trap doors we might be able to just buff it out a bit and make it one mob proof on top because that's a spawnable block and then two it'll just have a little bit extra thickness to it also i love when i spam click in the crafting table and just happen to craft exactly as many pieces as i need it makes me look like a real professional minecrafter but the plan after this i might have mentioned before is going to be to connect this up with whatever structure we're building using all of this granite blocks as like the outline for the power structure powerhouse that we're going to build inside of the city because i want to explain some way of powering everything up here so we'll get to that here soon and this i think would be best if we just unleash those oh no that's bad please stop please stop yes it's going all the way and definitely lots of buttons are breaking down there but that's okay. 
And for the one final one, finishing off of the waterfall. And I like that. I think that's working out really well. It is even going inside of the bucket. That's kind of fun. Switching over to the far side of our starter house on the other cliff is we can now see it. And it looks pretty good from a distance. I think that worked out pretty well. If we jump all the way down to the water, though, I don't think it's even going to be visible. No. No, it's not. That's fine. What we could do, however, is eventually make another larger... Oh, there's a dolphin. He's playing in the waterfall. Uh, should we make a larger water wheel down here? Like an even bigger one, like that huge one that I had started to make up there. What if we made a second one down here? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I spent a bit more time detailing out the area, adding in some bamboo, some oak leaves, as well as I saw these vines over here. I was like, wait, we could have some vines hanging from up above and that could look quite cool. So once all of this bamboo stuff grows up, I feel like it's gonna help bring it more into the environment. But now folks, we're actually gonna be switching gears away from this thing. Eventually we will work on this rocky shore that we have. I wanna move over to doing something that I've been talking about doing for quite a long time, and that is building up an iron farm. It's something that I've talked about being the main source of economy behind our city here. And today I want to actually tackle that and get moving forwards on it. So I've got to get a few different blocks together here so we can actually make this thing happen. We're going to be building up the same farm that we built in the hardcore world because that thing worked like a charm. And this is a design by Logical Geek Boy. He's an absolutely fantastic dude. Used to play with him over on the Legacy SMP server and arrows do not go with our sand. The best part about this farm is everything that we're gonna need outside of some lava and actually moving villagers over is in my inventory already. This thing is absolutely tiny and it should give us about seven stacks of iron per hour. You know, I should bring some dirt on me just in case we need to use some floating blocks. Now for this farm, the idea I've always had is turning it into some form of an oil rig, floating out here in the water so we don't have to worry about much else being around it. Today, we're not gonna be actually building up the oil rig itself. I just wanted to get the farm set up and then we can decorate it around it in the future. But the farm being set up, which I believe is gonna go right about here. So it's close enough to the city that hopefully it'll activate when we're working around and just running around in there. As mentioned, today we're just going to be building up the technical biddies so it's actually working as this is going to be the economy behind the city that we are creating. City, village, town, hamlet, place, castle, kingdom, civilization. Why do I keep calling it different things? All right, I just referenced the tutorial that we're following for this and we need at least eight blocks of space around everything. So bring ourselves up a few blocks, probably not the worst idea so that we can have a little bit more space to move around on. But getting ourselves started here, we simply just need to bring in this guy right over here and then we're gonna be bringing in some glass right above it. And, and sometimes I know I could be walking y'all through this and everything like that, but again, it's a tutorial by Logic, so I don't wanna be taking anything away from that. You, I'll try and leave a link to it in the description, and we're just gonna be kind of working through it as we go here. So we've gotta create a little bit of a tube at this point for it looks like a zombie villager is gonna be sitting, or a zombie's gonna be sitting at this point, and we're gonna have some villagers sitting over there and right over here. We've got our zombie chamber in place. All we gotta do is get one of those guys down there and then we just bring ourselves off and create these little wings to the sides where right into this point, we're gonna put three villagers. Yeah, that means we gotta get them from all the way up there using that same track to over here. We'll deal with that part later. And then we also have to get a zombie sitting right in there, which we'll have to name tag and all that stuff. Inside of the middle here, we do have these little sticky pistons that can activate pushing glass down and that'll be able to block the line of sight with the zombie sitting in here. So if we wanna turn off the farm, all we gotta do is that. I think one of the things I've realized about these farms is sometimes they can be so simple and so small that I'm still just like, wait, what, that works? How does this work? I really don't understand this. Somehow the spawning mechanics are all of the iron golems and everything like that, they'll only spawn up here. And so we put a water bucket right at this point so it'll flow them down into this corner. And all we gotta do here is create some hoppers like this and put a little lava thing on top. Like what, how is that? How is that gonna be able to get us infinite iron? I guess we still have to deal with getting all of the villagers set up in here and actually transporting them over, which is gonna be more of a headache than it is building it right now. But you know, just the fact that this is still just something that's possible, it's just, that's amazing. Spawning platform is in place now, and all I gotta do is get a lava bucket and throw him right in that block, and the fences will keep it held up. I believe that even works if fire tick is turned on. So that side's ready to go. I just gotta duplicate this whole build right over here to this side too, and then every part of building the farm is actually done. Making sure I'm lining up exactly with that block right there, and I can just get started on the building portion of this. It's four, and then we bring it over by five, and that's, that's the science behind it.
Now, the reason I chose all the gray glass is because it's not going to show up all that much, and it's going to look kind of spooky from the distance, which I think would be really, really cool for us. And then also on top of that, it helps to make it feel almost like there's soot or just some sort of gross, grimy stuff that'll really add into this dark feeling that we can go for with the eventual oil rig around this point. I feel like that's not going to be the happy, happy place of our flower forest, but maybe it's something just with a little bit more grime to it. So I think this is an awesome way to do that. Now I'm going to get rid of all the temporary blocks just so that we can manage this more easily as we're going and kind of reset our building palette. For me, when doing technical stuff, I feel like removing all these things and then coming back and adding them in later actually helps my brain work a little bit better on the whole process of it. So all we got to do now is get the lava in there and then we got to do all of, you know, the, the easy, easy, super easy part of moving villagers and things around to actually get them out here. Ran into the nether to grab a bunch of lava for ourselves and now all we got to do is uh, take a long dirt path pathway from right all the way over on this rail that I just kind of intercepted all the way up here and we're going to send it over there. I went up at this height here because I want to use a water bucket which I forgot. Now with the water bucket we do want to be careful that we're not breaking anything so as long as we're way out here in the ocean we just drop him down there right like that. Place a block below, get back on top and we can carry on our merry way. This is the high quality building content that you come to this channel for that you all know and love a giant dirt line. I know it's single dirt. I know don't panic too much over here. It's not the double dirted stuff because I didn't have enough dirt to do it. But look at this glorious thing. We are a good chunk of the way there. And wow, this is a lot farther away than I realized. It is going to be nighttime at this point in time, and I'm really hoping that a zombie will actually spawn on top of this dirt line, because then we could just get him right in there in the middle as we're going. I actually did bring a name tag over here with me so we can just lock him in place there and leave him in the middle, which would be absolutely awesome, but I think we're pretty much at the layer that we need to be. I maybe go down one more. Well, we are here. I might as well get the lava in place and then we'll start working on the rails. I actually need to go get a few activator rails because that'll make this a lot easier. But there is number one activated right up there for the killing chambers or iron collection chambers, as we might want to call it. We're nice people here. We're not murderers. I made it with the rails all the way along there to right here. We are that shy on being able to get this whole thing done. Ah, <sighs> Time to go get some more. Oh my gosh, look right there. We have a zombie up here. The sun is rising. We've got to act quick because he's going to start burning alive. Come on over this way, buddy. Hi. Hello. Can you see me? You don't like walking on rails, do you? Why don't zombies like rails? I don't know what's going on. No, 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 no. Please don't. No, 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 no. No. Huh. We'll try again next night. I'm really glad we built the system inside of here, just being all ready to go with that so we can pick him up. He's ready to go. All we gotta do is flip the lever, keep you moving on forwards, and I think he's gonna stop at the zombie, and we could flip that, keep him going on here, because we don't need to worry about doing any trading. Trying to keep up, but he's going too fast. I gotta see if I can make it over to him and be able to know he actually made it into a spot. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with a second Wilson swimming in the water. There we go, number one is in place. The second Wilson, he's somewhere out there, by the way. We might eventually see a villager floating out there. He went off as, on his own journey. You just leave him be. Okay, number one is in place. He is chilling out there. I'm gonna wait for the nighttime before I even try and move him around or do anything with him. And now the way that we gotta do this is one, in getting the minecart back. And two, we've got to get rid of this activator rail and turn that into a regular rail so that the next one gets knocked off at that point. Another way, if you were smarter, is just to use a lever to power the activator rails instead of using the full blocks of redstone. It's fine. Absolutely perfect timing with the last boy right over here as everybody is now in their beds and it's going to be nighttime so I can get rid of all of these temporary blocks that were holding the villagers in place. Thankfully, the villagers are smart enough not to jump off of their beds, so they're just going to be floating out here for pretty much forever. It's going to be great. They're going to love it. They have a great view of the ocean. Waterfront property. What more could they ask for? And there we go. Finally. Finally, finally, finally a zombie. And it looks like the sun is going to be coming up soon, but we should have time to get him in place. He's going to be sitting in water after a while, and we are going to be replacing this with a nice little block for him to rest on top of. No, 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 no. Come on! Oh, I thought we had finally had one. 
I knew I should have gotten him in there before the villagers. Mm, well, it's on cooldown now. Let's hope we can get a second one. New plan, as we're gonna have to wait for night one more time as I have a brand new staircase. Oh God, our base is looking so great right now. And some protective walls over here to stop the villagers from seeing the zombies so we don't get any more iron golem spawns. Zombie test dummy, I think number seven at this point in time is on his way up here. And hopefully we can get by the villager iron golem patrol that we at least know that the farm's gonna work once he's in there but for now we got to figure out a way to get him inside huh. come on keep coming this way keep coming this way you're doing great we're gonna just place some blocks in here to block him in oh there he is oh there he is come on in 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 and now he's on his spot look at that and down you go buddy boy and before we forget hi and subscribe now to make sure he doesn't burn alive we can put the blocks down right in there and then we can place the lever back on top of this guy. And if we break these, that should actually start the farm. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate that because we need to get rid of all of the dirt. Otherwise, we're gonna have iron golem spawning literally everywhere. Definitely gonna need to have a good way to activate this, but if we can get just close enough to activate the lever right there, I think one more block. There we go. Farm is now on, the villagers should be waking up and we should eventually see an iron golem up here above. I'm just gonna let you go in the water again. I don't think that'll mess anything up having some iron golems floating down there killing off some drowned. They could just hang out. It'll be fine. I'm gonna try and stick close by to this area and watch for any iron golems spawning and take down a lot of these dirt pathways that we've been building. The villagers are definitely upset over here. I think it's just on the cooldown from when that last guy spawned in, so it should be working. Oh, there we go. We've got our first iron golem. Check that out. Oh, it's functional. We did it. We have iron. Oh, this world is gonna be so much better now. Well, we have two iron golems that are ready to home Squidward if he would like to move into the bay here. But they're just going to be chilling down here and just hanging out. They're just looking around. They seem pretty happy. There's no zombies for them to attack. As far as they know, their villagers up there are safe and sound. Clean up the railroad in the sky, and it's looking so much better having that clean stuff around here. We've really changed the base a lot today between that structure and now having a functional iron farm inside of this world. Oh, it's going to be huge moving forwards and i think what i'm gonna do here is edit up everything for the video so far because i have no idea how far into it we are at this point and just afk uh right inside the house with old old ender butt right over there and see if it works to activate the iron farm because if it can activate from right here the sugarcane farm can also activate from right here and that would be amazing otherwise we're gonna have to build some underwater shipwreck as our afk home like right outside in here to activate all of the farms in the city all right, I've been AFK for quite a while and there's actually some iron and oh, it just despawned. There's iron and a rose floating out there or a, a red poppy flower. And I'm really curious to know how well this is working. I wonder if that iron golem was one of our two guys. Oh, yep, sorry Squidward, you can't move in anymore, buddy. The, everybody's gone. But we might be able to see how much iron we got. Ooh, that's not bad. 34 iron from AFK for just a little while. I'm nervous about the other side being out of range though. And over here, we've got almost a stack of iron for ourselves as well. And all the poppies we'll have to sort out and just throw into a composter here soon. But I'll take that. That is over a stack and 23 iron right there, which is uh, awesome. By the way, when I mentioned Wilson earlier, there's Wilson. Wilson's hanging out there in the ocean, just chilling. The vines of bamboo and everything have been growing up on the structure we built earlier. And I gotta say, I love this even more now. That really feels like it belongs in the jungle. Next thing on the agenda for today's video is I know last episode I asked if we should do the Ender Dragon fight today or not. And well, obviously we haven't done the Ender Dragon fight at all yet in this video. And we haven't even found the stronghold. And we're 22 minutes into the video. So that's probably not going to be happening today. However, what needs to happen before we can do any of that is that little Enderman right down there. We've got to collect a lot of Eyes of Ender so that we can actually find the dang stronghold to begin with. That's, where is this gap? Oh, he's directly above me. Come on, get him. Oh, that went through his tentacles. I'm really good at this game. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die to a gas. Oh, that just clipped through his shoulder. I swear I've hit this gas like six times. There we go. Thank you, finally. Now for the actual thing we need to find out, fight out here is these guys. We really gotta fight some Endermen so that we can start getting a few Ender Pearls. Oh, as he disappears. They really hurt. They really, really hurt. There we go, one is down. I don't know how many Eyes of Ender we're gonna need. At least 12 though, and there's two Ender Pearls for us. I figured we would head over to the Warp Forest down there in the fog and hopefully be able to get a few more of the spawns down there. For being a Warped Forest, there's a big lack of Endermen down here. 
Anybody? Any tall boys? Oh, there's one. Perfect. Hi, how you doing? I'm just gonna dig a little cave and then we can fight, okay? Hey, you. Yeah, you. You really smell. You really smell. No, he's not mad at me? Okay. Uh, how else do I insult you? I'll just attack you. That's fine. I know there's another tactic that a lot of people have been using recently of just using a boat and you leave it on the ground and get them to run into it. That's probably a pretty good way to go, but I feel like we're okay. I'm feeling pretty equipped. We gotta get some netherite stuff here soon and then we can really dive into fighting the ender dragon and all that. But you know, for now, I think we can just fight some endermen like this. This will be okay. Famous last words, who knows? Oh, he broke my shield. And he's in the lava. Okay then. Oh, now he's real mad. I'm a big professional Minecrafter. I'm really brave and tough, and I'm definitely not hiding back here. Nope, not hiding. I'm not hiding at all. Nope, oh, no, I'm not hiding. Never. I would never hide from you. Oh, now I'm scared. Oh, he's back. I think 15 should be enough, but if we see some more on the way out, we'll grab those too. We got one more that is absolutely awesome. Blink. Oh, where'd my cave go? I don't know. Oh, making a new one. All right, there's a stack and two. That should be good for the Ender Pearl account, I hope. Now for the most important question, can you go on sand? No, you cannot. That's a bummer. I placed some dirt down around here though, so we can at least add some of them in. We were able to make absolutely so much progress today between getting an iron farm set up for ourselves and getting a whole new section of the city to be able to build stuff on, a new water mill. And now we have the Ender Pearls ready to go to dive into the end. But anyways, folks, that's going to have to do it for today's episode. Thank you all so very much for watching. Click that like button down below if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are brand new. And my friends, I will catch you on the flip side.